Well, here we are. We went into a day of extra time, but UK president for this COP, Alok Sharma, was managed to seal the deal. 200 countries signing the Glasgow Climate Pact. It's significant progress for the world. 140 countries have lifted their game and announced stronger targets for 2030. There is language to look at phasing down coal. It was saying phase out until the final moments when India did a late intervention and watered down that language, but the phase down of coal is significant language in any COP. It's the first time that that's happened. On top of that, we've seen significant commitments to reduce methane emissions agreements on deforestation and on ocean protection, as well as we look forward to the federal election where Australia uh, will really have to lift its game and both major parties will be put on notice uh, to take stronger climate commitments to the next federal election. This is the 12 days where Australia was really set apart from the rest of the world. We were missing in action uh, at best and we were obstructive to stronger outcomes here at worst. When it came for Australia to step up on coal, we weren't there. When it came to Australia stepping up on reducing methane emissions, we weren't there. We were blockers at this conference and the rest of the world saw Australia's behaviour as not good enough. Um, and I don't think we'll get away with it again. But from now on, Australia will be put on notice that we really need to lift our game as the world moves closer to the kind of commitments we need to see to a world within 1.5. This agreement got us to within range of two degrees. Um, so there's more work to do, a lot more work to do, but there was significant progress made in Glasgow. Um, and it'll be important to see what policy offerings uh, both of the major parties take to the federal election in March to May next year.